Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming, and super soon, Dragon's Dogma 2. With that release coming up, we're creating a set of videos dedicated to the vocations of the game, aka the classes. Today though, I'm talking specifically Mystic Spearhand, a new vocation for Dragon's Dogma, seemingly replacing the Mystic Knight of the original. The Mystic Spearhand looks to be one of the most popular vocations going into the launch though. Everyone I've spoken to about it either has it as a first interest or at least one of their top choices. So if you yourself are interested in this vocation, let me cover all the details about it for you to consider. As a reminder, I've literally played this class specifically already, thanks to an event held by Capcom to try the game for a few hours. Now I do have footage and videos using my own gameplay, but they did restrict us to only use 20 minutes of footage total, which means I can't use any of that footage in this video. So go check out those videos if you want. So, Mystic Spearhand. Here's the general concept to begin with. The Mystic Spearhand is a hybrid vocation, which in this case means it uses both physical and magical skills. Only available though to the original so that does mean pawns can't use this vocation. To learn it then, you'll first have to start the game as a starter vocation, which will be fighter, mage, archer or thief at least to begin with, and then you'll need to meet with Sigurd, described on the website. Sigurd is the mystic spearhand master who hunts dragons for his own personal reasons. Described as a quiet but curious man, he is found constantly training his skills and unique combat style, all in that pursuit of exterminating dragons wandering the world to hunt them. So where we're actually going to find him with that in mind is anyone's guess right now. But as a vocation master, you will need to find him and you will need to form a positive relationship with him in order to learn the vocation and actually get started. Now for some specific details. The Mystic Spearhand uses the unique weapon, the Duo Spear, and rather force-like magic in combination with that. So you're actually very versatile in your ability. From fast channeling melee swings or arcing magical cleaves that can take down enemies from range that auto-target by the way, to teleportation to close the distance or bolts that can stun enemies from range, leaving them exposed. The Spearhand uses its powers to throw objects from rocks to full-on bodies of fallen foes or created elements from allies and creating defensive shields to mitigate damage for you and any ally that's near you when you activate it. Using both the physical and magic damage then, you're kind of able to deal with those awkward enemies that might be resistant or even immune to one or the other. It's commonly referred to as the Jedi of Dragon's Dogma, and I think that's a pretty valid comparison. It's like a medieval version or something. But from my experience, in a word, I'd call this balanced. It felt like I had a great answer to everything. If there was an enemy in the air, I had so many ways to deal with that, like a heavy attack combo to shoot out those arcs of magic, cleaving and knocking them down, or I could bolt shock them, which would stun them, or I could teleport up to them, bring them down myself with attacks, or I could just latch on and grab on land. If there's a big enemy with a weak spot exposed, I could infinite spin the duo spear for incredible physical damage while up close, kind of channeling that out as long as possible. I could protect myself or allies when a big attack is coming with that shield effect or punish any stun or freeze that we've achieved with a heavy, which would lead to a special critical hit animation that would usually kill regular enemies instantly. All of that was great, but then the mobility was also impressive. The two weapon skills I played with were relevant to that, which would lead me into dashing forward and thrusting at a medium range, good for a gap closer in general, but also nice in general traversal, like crossing gaps I otherwise couldn't, or instantly placing myself on top of a monster to start dealing out damage up close and personal. Maybe I'd use it the opposite way and use it to evade and get away from an incoming big attack by just teleporting out. Alternatively, another skill I had at the time allowed me to vertically leap straight upwards and then pierce anything on the way up as I slide back down after. This could leave me standing on top of a monster, or allow me to reach a weak spot that's a little bit too high above me. And those were just the abilities I played with in a pretty limited session. More have been revealed from various playtests Capcom have run at different events, and because of that we've got a little bit extra skill information and descriptions to talk about, so let's do exactly that. I'll be referring to these and showing suitable footage as best I can at the same time, though for some I'm sure it'll just be descriptions. Still, the information is good to know. In this footage then, we see the skill onto Sky, one that I didn't get to use but is comical. You are able to launch enemies hilariously far into the distance, easily, instantly killing them using gravity whenever they actually do fall back down. However, the description states that it only works on smaller targets and you'll get nothing from the kill when doing that. But it should still work as a nasty hit against, say, a bigger target where it's not going to launch them, where you won't actually be removing them from the battle instantly. So it is a comical ability, but hopefully potent against the stronger targets. And if there's a particularly annoying enemy, you can just get rid of them. We also see some use of another weapon skill that I did not use, Thief's Hond, which basically is a stamina steal. You sap 
the life of the target, you drain and gain stamina, allowing for maybe more aggressive stamina spending, since you're able to get it back and recover it pretty aggressively. You will need the window to actually do that though, so we'll see how this actually works in the gameplay. With how incredibly valuable stamina is to everyone though, that does sound like it could be very good. Another skill that I haven't quite seen clips of would be the ones to do with the conjured blades. It sounds like you conjure some blades and they deal some potential magic damage. How that really works though, I can't say, but one thing we've seen a little bit of is the insane wild fury. Basically, you're creating a magic double of yourself and it seems to kind of exist for a period to help you fight. Just like you though, it's going to have the ability to do magic and physical damage. And so in concept or theory, it should just be like a increased DPS window when you use that. Pretty much an ultimate ability. On another note for the skills though, there's the various bolts which come in multiple forms. The version I was using was redoubted, which allowed for no damage but ranged stunts. If I press the button again on contact, well then it would kind of explode and do a very potent stun, very good even against big targets. Or if I press jump on contact, it would teleport me straight to it. Very cool and a lot of variety of options there. But apparently there's also the foreboding version to this to prevent enemy movement entirely, kind of snaring them rather than stunning them it sounds like. Then just like Redoubted's version, you seem to be able to press it again on impact, but in this case it'll do a kind of AoE snare. So if you want to hold targets in a location, maybe you've got a sorcerer on your team who's planning on dropping a comet or something, or you hold them in place in the tornado, whatever it is, holding them down could be good depending on your pawn setup. Now on the topic of augments, we don't know the full details of what augments will come with the Mystic Spearhand, but we do know you'll get some passive increased movement speed during lifting or carrying, and one gives you extra gold from gold pouches. The other ones that we've only really glimpsed the names of are things like polarity and athleticism, so we'll have to to see exactly what those give, but if I had to guess, I'd figure athleticism would be one that's more universally useful. From my experiences with the vocation though, and all the extra details, I do think this is going to be one of the most versatile vocations you can play. You're able to chain special attacks very well into one another. We see the bolt used to stun a target, then you teleport to its location on contact with the bolt, appearing next to it to then use a heavy attack to punish, leading to the special critical hit animation for an instant kill. Again, that would kill any regular enemy that I did that to, instantly. With the corpse now available, the Spearhand uses humble offerings to throw the body at the larger foe, which staggers it for a moment, which then gives the player the opportunity to teleport straight forward with the damaging thrust, which results in them now standing nicely on top of the head, a weak point, and begin raining down blows. That is incredibly effective gameplay, and a great clip of showing how you can combo things into one another for great control. Because there's no cooldown on anything, you're just limited by your stamina management, which as we now know, there is going to be a Tool to help steal that if that's an effective way in combat we'll have to see but that brings us to the end i hope this has answered any questions you might have had about the vocation and maybe we'll help you decide whether you're going to go mystic spearhand or not naturally be aware this likely isn't everything the class has to offer we're just working with the limited information that we do have while trying to follow the restrictions we were given if you guys know anything extra be sure to drop it in the comments but until next time i've been hollow you've been you and thanks for watching Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye